One of the things I absolutely love about the hobby of drawing maps is that it takes almost nothing to get started. Really, you just need any old pencil, any paper, and your imagination. However, once you start progressing in any form of art, you do find that there are some really neat tools and aids that can make your life easier and make the hobby more enjoyable. So this video is going to focus on some of those tools. Hi everybody, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. Now this video is mostly going to be focusing on analog drawing tools, so we're not going to be talking about tools for drawing maps digitally, which happens to be the way I mostly draw maps these days, so I think a future video on that topic is definitely warranted. I do have a past video on how I draw maps digitally, and I'll put a link right up at the top there. Do know that any of the tools I'm talking about here in this video will be linked down in the video description, and most of those are going to be Amazon affiliate links, so buying through them does give me a small commission at no extra cost to you. It's a really great way to support the channel. Another great way to support the channel is on Patreon, and patrons actually get access to weekly live map drawing streams. So if you want to check that out, as well as some other cool benefits, head on over to patreon.com slash WASD20. All right, now let's talk about the tools and let's start out very simple with pencils. Now, you can absolutely use your number two pencil that you have laying around your house, totally fine. But I have really appreciated getting actual drawing pencils. The first that I got was actually this Pro Art set, which is now mostly depleted. It actually came with some erasers and charcoal and things like that as well. I highly recommend this set. It's less than $10 on Amazon. And then a couple years ago, I did have Arteza or Arteza send me some drawing pencils as well as some other art supplies. And the drawing pencils I have appreciated. Now, why do you want actual drawing pencils? It has to do with the hardness of the lead. Your standard number two pencil that you have around the house is going to be an HB in general. But if you get into the F and H, range, you're going to find that the lead is harder and it will leave fainter pencil lines. That's going to be really nice when you're just wanting to lay down some light sketches and then ink over it later. If you use a hard lead pencil, those faint lines are going to be super easy to erase compared to nice dark pencil lines. So I usually use a 2H when I'm doing my sketching, and I really hardly ever use the pencils in the B range. This non-photo blue pencil is also really handy because if you are wanting to scan your maps later, you can actually start by drawing in non-photo blue pencil, and then you can ink over that. Then you don't have to worry about erasing any of your pencil lines, you can scan it in and very quickly in Photoshop or a similar pro program, erase all of the blue and you'll be left with only your nice, clean, dark ink work. Now, speaking of erasing, I do recommend investing in some really good erasers. That's one of the things I liked about this Pro Art set is it came with a neat eraser and a nice white pencil eraser. I absolutely love using neat erasers. I love just the feel of them, and because you can knead them, you can shape them into any way you want, so you have a lot of control. You definitely don't want to be stuck with one of those hard plasticky erasers. As you sit down, you've got your nice beautiful map all drawn out in pencil and you just have a couple little things to erase and then you go and totally smudge it up with this crappy eraser. It's bad news. Trust me, get some good erasers and avoid the heartache. An eraser shield might also come in handy. I honestly hardly ever use it, but there might be times when you need even more control for a very fine bit of erasing without smudging the rest of your paper. These are very inexpensive and useful for those situations. Next, let's talk about paper. Now, for me, I honestly prefer just a simple sketchbook. Yeah, you can use your regular old printer paper. That works fine, but it doesn't hold up very well to lots of erasing. It's just nice to have something a little bit thicker, in my opinion. So a nice sketchbook, really simple. This one happens to be 60-pound paper, which is not super thick. It's totally fine for most of my map drawing needs. This is 9 by 12. Drawing paper is generally going to start getting a little bit thicker than sketchbook paper. So this one is 70 pound paper this one is 80 pound these are 11 by 14 and that's another really solid size that you might want to pick up if you're starting to draw bigger maps I also have this 14 by 17 and 11 by 17 here and this stuff is actually 100 pound paper and it is nice and smooth so you can also get a lot of variety in the smoothness of paper for me 
I don't really need a super smooth surface. I don't mind a little bit of roughness to it. So I don't get super into all the different kinds of paper and textures and things like that. But if you are planning to do watercolor maps, I would definitely recommend picking up some watercolor paper. I do have some of that as well. And then the last thing I'll say about paper is it can be really fun to get some graph paper because then you can do gridded maps and dungeons and things like that. So I really like having a pad of graph paper for dungeon doodles and check into getting some isometric graph paper. Drawing isometric maps is really, really fun and these are pretty inexpensive. For either type of graph paper, I do recommend getting the blue line stuff so that if you want to, when you scan it, you can quickly remove all the blue lines just as with the non-photo blue pencil. All right, next up, let's talk pens. Now, I definitely recommend investing in some actual art pens, even if you go to like Michael's or something and you buy one nice fine liner pen, try it out. I think you're really gonna like it. I use the Pigma Microns from Sakura. They're a great brand with a great reputation. I haven't tried too many others, but I'm sure there's lots of good brands out there. I do not, however, recommend these Arteza Inconic fine liners. I just didn't like the feel of it and I felt like the ink wasn't really that dark. This set of Pigma Microns did come with size 005 all the way up to 08. And then it also came with a brush pen and a graphic pen, which I don't really use very often, but it's nice to have. I use the size ones a lot, so I ended up buying just a big pack of only size ones as well. And then the other pen that I do use fairly frequently is just a Papermate flare pen. Uh, I just really like the way it feels. It's not too flowy. I've tried gel pens and they're too flowy and I end up like smearing the ink and stuff. Ballpoint pens just don't look good, so I don't recommend those. Uh, but a Papermate flare pen, I do really like. The only other pens I sometimes use are these Sakura Koi watercolor brush pens in gray. This is a six pack with all different shades and tints of gray. And these are really nice for shading. Pencil works great for shading, but as I like to finish all of my work in ink, I do really like these for just a, dropping a little shadow beneath my trees, maybe shading my mountains. These are excellent. Another really handy tool you probably already have around the house is a ruler. Rulers are handy for drawing borders, for drawing the edges of a key or legend. Sometimes you'll want one for drawing the straight edges of an encounter map or a dungeon map. If you're working quite a bit on really large paper, it might be good to get a bigger like 16 or 24 inch ruler or drawing straight edge. For drawing circles, I definitely recommend getting a compass or a circle template. Either one is a solid option. I end up using this a little bit more, just doing kind of concentric circles when I'm drawing a compass rose. You might also have some circular rooms or circular buildings on a dungeon or encounter map. And for compasses, I have a really nice one from a mechanical drawing class I took in high school. This is a Stedler, 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 Stedler. Stedtler? Why do they put a D and then a T, right? I don't. What I like about this one is it has the lead just embedded in the compass and it has a really nice smooth and solid motion for adjusting it. I think these are like 25 or $30. I'll put a link below, but you can get much cheaper ones that still look really decent. When I was doing a lot of maps on paper, one investment that was way worth the money was a lettering aid or text guide. This comes with several different widths for your guidelines for text so that you can write more neatly. For me, it was a must. Otherwise, my writing is super sloppy. And next, let's talk about a light table. Now, I got this cheap kind of LED drawing tracing pad on Amazon. This was only $20. It's totally fine, but it like barely fits a nine by 12 sheet of paper. So you can get much bigger ones. It provides plenty of light and it just plugs in via USB in this case. The power button on this one, a little bit iffy. Sometimes I'll push the power button and it doesn't turn off. Anyway, at only $20, I can't complain that much. But this is really nice if you're working in multiple drafts. You can just trace over your previous draft. You have your underlying version that's maybe a really sloppy and kind of pieced together over time. And then you put a fresh sheet of paper over it and you can trace and get nice clean lines for a more finished version. Or maybe you're working on one that has mostly geographic features and then another one has political borders. Really nice to be able to trace over previous versions and do multiple drafts. A window on a bright day will do in a pinch, but 
these are not that expensive and I know a lot of artists really swear by them. One last tool that I don't have is a drafting table uh, or some kind of drawing table. If you're gonna be spending extended hours drawing and working on maps or other forms of art, these are extremely useful for just helping you maintain good posture and work more comfortably. You can actually get fairly inexpensive tabletop versions that you would just like put on your table and it just slants your work towards you. I'll put a link to one of those below. I think they're anywhere from like 30 to 50 bucks. Or you can go get a full drafting table that's adjustable and everything for a couple hundred dollars. The reason I don't have one is that I'm working mostly digitally these days and my Cintiq actually does tilt up for a comfortable working position. That's gonna do it for the main portion of this video, but there are a couple of honorable mention items I'll just rattle through real quickly. One, my videos are a handy tool. Two, there are lots of decent books on map drawing as well that are worth looking into. Third, beans. If you don't yet know how to use beans on a map, and by the way, rice also works quite well, I hear, I will put a link to the video series where you can see me doing my thing right up there. And yeah, this is a massive bag of beans, way bigger than you need. I actually bought this for a uh, convention where I was doing a map drawing session and I passed out a little bit of beans to everybody there. By the way, if you have a local convention and you wanna see me come out and run a map drawing session, talk to the convention organizer. It's a really fun thing that I love to do. We'd love to go to other parts of the country and world and hang out with you fine people. If you have any other suggestions for useful tools for drawing maps, please put them down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Let's learn from one another. You can also come on over to the WASD20 Discord server. We currently have a mapping contest going on for a Skylands map. Now that's not to be confused with Skylanders. We're talking about like, you know, maps of lands in the sky. We have a monthly mapping challenge as well. And anyway, come hang out with us and talk maps. And before we go, thank you once again to the WASD20 patrons. Patrons are people who support the channel on a monthly basis. They're amazing. You can join with them for as little as $2 a month. Head on over to patreon.com slash WASD20. Thanks patrons. And thank you all for watching this one. Make sure you leave it a like if you enjoyed it. Take care everybody. You'll see me again very soon.